There's a, a pretty good stat about the number of, uh, of comebacks the Titans have made in, in recent years when down in the fourth quarter. Uh, just in terms of, of Ryan Tannehill, uh, um, how good is he at, at kind of blocking out outside noise in those high pressure situations and just kind of zoning in on what, what needs to be done there? Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's such a competitor and such a, a tough-minded, uh, high-character individual. And you know, I got to see that over the last couple of years and now experiencing it in this role. It's impressive to watch him stay you know, in phase and focus no matter what's going on in the game. You know, he's just on to the next drive or the next play. Uh, and, and that's a, a very contagious mentality uh, for the offense. So very, very impressed with his demeanor. Especially hard or in, in those type situations, you know, when you're down in the fourth quarter or, you know, or tied in the fourth quarter. I think as, as you train that mindset, you know, you, you kind of just keep plugging along until the final horn blows, you know. And uh, I think that's something that he's done well. Uh, in the past couple of years, and it's just continuing to grow and, and like I said, spread throughout the offense. And so uh, I don't know that it's any harder in the fourth quarter. I, I'm sure there's some sense of wanting to press and fix it and get it going, um, you know, but uh, he, he does a great job of staying in phase. Have some, I know AJ expressed maybe that there was some doubt that he'd play on Monday. Did you have some doubt yourself in the fact that he battled through what he was dealing with and played well? What that maybe say about him in, in your mind? Yeah, we know AJ's a, a tough guy and, and a competitor as well, and we knew that there was, uh, you know, it was going to take a lot to keep him out of that game. Uh, but I've I've kind of developed the mindset of wait till the uh, the inactives are turned in and then see who I have available. So. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't uh, trying to plan on having him, not having him, all that. I just. I just listened to the powers of be and whoever I have. We expect him to go out there and perform. What's your scripting philosophy and process for, for early games? Uh, in the beginning of the game, yeah, I think that there's a you know a, a kind of a balance of trying to show them some things off of your own tendencies, uh, trying to mix personnel groupings, things like that. Uh, it can be a, a week by week thing based on what they do early in the game. Uh, you know, but certainly uh, got to do a better job of starting faster as an offense and, and take a peek at all those things, all those factors that go into it. 12 or 15 that you try to get to in the first 20 or? Yeah, we don't set a, a specific number on it because so many situations come up within those, uh, you know, 10, 12, 15 plays, whatever it is. You might be in third down on the third play of the game, you might be in the red zone on the first play of the game. So try to get some early thoughts, some things that you want to get to early. Maybe they've looked good in practice, or maybe it's a, a certain counter punch to something we've done. Um, you know, but there's no real set number uh, in terms of you know having to get these 12 plays run. Why do you think the first quarter and first drive in particular has been such a problem? Yeah, it's been a, a little bit of a uh, little bit of everything, right? We've had some self-inflicted wounds with penalties. We've had some missed opportunities. Um, you know, I think we, you know, all just got to focus on doing our individual jobs and get the thing going a little bit smoother uh, right out of the gates. It wasn't high volume, but you still had some effectiveness with the passing game. How critical was that just as far as to be able to find the balance that, that you were able to find? This week? Yeah, it's, it's got to be complimentary, right? It's got to be complimentary football. When they come up and try to stop the run, we got to be able to hit our play passes. Uh, you know, I think early in the game, uh, we didn't take advantage of those opportunities, and then as the game went on, we started to hit some of them, and and uh, that's you know our identity as an offense. You know we got to be able to run the football first and foremost, and then we got to be able to make people pay uh, with play pass. And I think that was much more effective as the game went on. And we're starting to see you just. It seems like the play calling is like more layered. Where it's like you're showing one thing and then doing something off of that. Is that the result like a comfort level for you, or what? What is behind that? I'll I'll leave it up to you guys to analyze my play calling trying to uh, come up with a game plan each week when, like, for instance, this week, A.J. and Julio, you know, you might not know for, for days whether they're playing or not. You know, how hard is that to say, okay, if, if they're both in this, if one's in, if neither, you know, do you have to go through different scenarios like that? Yeah, I think if you if you try to be perfect with who's in there, uh, you set yourself up for frustration, you know, and so uh, try to adopt the approach of the next man up mentality and, you put in a scheme, you put in a play, and whoever ends up being in there to run it, uh, so be it. You know, obviously those are two uh, elite players that you talk about, and we'd love to have them out there and available for stuff that's highlighted for them. If if I get them, it's great, and if not, I expect the next guy to run the route as well. Will the Chiefs do well, and maybe what are the, some of the challenges they they will present on Sunday? Yeah, they're they're a physical team. Uh, they play with great energy. 
you know, and, and obviously, uh, you know, we've been in some big games uh, with this unit and a lot of those familiar faces. So we know that we're going to have to bring uh, physicality and a temperament from the first snap. And uh, we're going to have to be on our details because they throw a lot at you uh, from a look standpoint and a, a pressure package standpoint. So, uh, you know, we got to be dialed in and focused. You mentioned that the passing game improved throughout the game on Monday. Big Yeah, we started making the plays we were afforded the opportunity to make, you know, started making the throws that, that we needed to make. And, uh, you know, I think that that's a testament to our guys. They, they're a resilient group, and uh, sometimes it, it starts that way, and you're, you're just a couple inches off here and there. Uh, you know, tip my cap to the offensive line. I thought they did a nice job protecting and setting the pocket firm, and, you know, we were able to get through some progressions. Um, and, you know, it, sometimes it, it goes like that. You, takes a couple of drives to, to get your rhythm, you know, to, to find your stinger a little bit. And I, I think we did that. Todd, Nick, uh, Nick. Wide receivers. Nick made some big catches for you, especially on the third down in that second half. How much has he uh, progressed in this offense? I, I, I've praised Nick's value here uh, often. You know, I, I, I can't say enough about the guy. He works extremely hard. Uh, to know all three positions at the wide receiver position, and and uh, you know it shows. I mean, I think he made plays for us at F, X, and Z on Monday night. Uh, catches at multiple spots, big conversions. You know, getting us back on track on a second and long. Uh, he went down, and made a tackle on the kickoff. It kind of set the tone. You know, he's uh, he's an extremely valuable member of this offense, and uh, feel really fortunate to have him uh, to be able to fill in wherever we need him. Have you, guys, uh, have you guys tried uh, Torrey Carter much at, at tight end? I know he was kind of a hybrid guy. Is, is that Torrey has not played any tight end for us, no. Nope. Okay. Would, would that be something that you might, I guess, by this time? It's probably too late to do that. But. Uh, you know, we, we use uh, show team and some of that stuff to evaluate guys at different positions, and, and there's a little bit of that um, going on. But, you know, uh, Torrey's developing as a fullback and, and working hard at that spot, yeah.